Hi everyone, my name is Zhang Xianglu with Wang Wei, Xu Peng, Yang Tianruo, and Liang Kaitai. We developed new volumetric injection attacks against the dynamic surgical encryption with high recovery rates and fewer injections. I will present our work in three sections, motivations, oral attacks, and conclusion. For the motivations, let's first see review what DSE is and how it works. DSE involves the interaction between client and server to retrieve some encrypted files containing specific keywords. It mainly includes two functions, one is the query function and the other is the update function. In the query, the client generates tokens based on the keyword and sends them to the server. The server then searches the database to retrieve the matching encrypted files based on tokens and sends the files to the client. The client can then decrypt the file locally to complete the query. Then when the client wants to update a file, he first extracts the keyword from the file, then generates the encrypted index for the keyword file pair and send both the encrypted index and the encrypted file to the server. The research on DSE has been ongoing for many years and has led to some scheme meeting various security requirements, for example, forward and backward secure DSE. However, most of these studies and solutions did not consider the threat that as a first party may index files containing specific keywords during the update phase in order to recover all subsequent queries. Here, we provide a model for injection attacks. Injection attacks can usually be divided into three stages, baseline, injection, and recovery. In the baseline phase, the adversary observes the linkage pattern LP star of some queries, such as X pattern represents the return the encrypted file identifier and search pattern, which indicates whether the two queries are the same, and so on. Subsequently, during the injection phase, the adversary generates injected files, each containing specified keywords based on the observation information in the baseline phase. The client then encrypts these files and uploads them to the server. Finally, in the recovery phase, the adversary determines the target query, observes the linked Python LP, and combines the information LP star and the injected file F, obtained in the previous two stages, to restore the target query. Based on the attack model, we reviewed some previous injection attacks. The first is the file injection attack by John et al. in 2016. Given n keywords, the KP16 requires total log n injected files to ensure that each keyword corresponds to different injected files, so that the adversary can restore the query based on the identifier of the injected file returned by the query. However, as the KP16 needs to identify the native file, it is difficult in practical applications because the client may encrypt the injected file and the adversary may not find the corresponding injected file based on the cipher text. And it is also difficult to bypass some different strategies such as OAM, PR, and other access Python hiding countermeasures. Afterwards, in 2020, Paul et al. proposed uh, volumetric injection attacks based on the responseless path, RLP, representing the number of returned files corresponding to a query. Their attacks ensure that each keyword corresponds to a unique number of injected files instead of identifying the injected files, and thus breaks through the overall based DSE scheme. However, their attacks require a large number of injected files, which far exceed the total number of keywords, denoted as pound W. In the same year, Blackstone et al. proposed the volumetric injection attack based on a response size pattern, RSP, referring as the total word count of the injected files matching a query. Nonetheless, their attacks still require linear injection files. Thus, we see that there is currently no practical volumetric injection attacks with fewer injection lengths, fewer injection size, and high recovery rate. In our work, we proposed two new volumetric injection attacks, achieving high recovery rates by consuming a few injection files. We list our main contributions. Our first attack, binary variable parameter attack, BVA, examining the RSP, only requires the, log the logarithmic injection length to achieve around 80% recovery rate. Or another attack, BVA may further reduce the injection size. In addition, we tested the effectiveness of our attack against some well-known piling strategies. We also optimized our attacks and tested its effectiveness when the client updated a large number of files during our attacks. This is a compliance between our attacks and other injection attacks. Also, the pound W here is the number of known keywords. 
or an injection attack like the KP16 achieve the optimal injection length, which is superior to other schemes, and does not require identifying the injected file, only relying on the RSP or RSP. Now, let's introduce our first attack VBA. We divided it into three stages based on the attack mode. In the baseline phase, the adversary observes some unknown queries response side, denoted as RSP1 wave, RSP2 wave, and so on. Subsequently, in the injection side phase, the adversary selects a parameter, gamma, and generates the injection file in a binary manner, ensuring that the injection side corresponding to each keyword is exactly a different multiple of gamma. For example, when the total number of keywords is 8, we need to ensure that the injection side corresponding to W0 is 0, the injection side corresponding to W1 is 1 multiply gamma, and W2 is 2 multiply gamma, and so on. Finally, in the recovery phase, for the target query queue with response side RSP queue, we detect whether there is an RSPL wave in the baseline phase, satisfying that RSP queue minus RSPL wave equals key multiply gamma. If so, we can restore query queue and W key. Our attack has two characteristics. One is that it requires the local rest make injected files. For example, only 20 injected files required for the keywords with port 10 to 6. And we require gamma multiply pound W injected word. Secondly, our attacks can dynamically adjust gamma to balance the injection side and the recovery rate. Here we, we represent the actual recovery rate and the next side of BBA for different GAM, as well as a comparison with decoding attack. We use the three different sites of different models, RN, Lucen, and Wikipedia. For the results, we observe that site gamma equals O W is sufficient to achieve a recovery rate of over 60% and requires much less in each side than decoding attack. For example, on the other data side, decoding attack requires an inch size of the 12th power of 10 to achieve a recovery rate of around 90%, where well, our attack only requires 8 power of 10, a decrease of 4 orders of magnitude to achieve the same recovery. Next comes our second attack, BVMA. This attack requires both RSP and RLP, but as shown in the figure, it only needs to ensure that each keyword corresponds to a different injection length or injection size using the binary injection method. Then, adversary records the injection length and the size corresponding to each keyword. In the recovery phase, VBMA performs the same recovery action as VBA, but requires both RSP and RLP to test whether the keywords match queries. This attack requires the optimal injection size of O W multiply log W as the KP16. Which is, which is smaller than O gamma multiplied upon W of BBA and other attacks. Here is a comparison of all attacks with other volumetric injection attacks, single round attack, and the decoding attack. We observed that we were able to achieve a similar high recovery rate as decoding attack and a single round attack with M equals pound W, but saved over 99% of the injection cost compared with others. We also demonstrated the effectiveness of our attacks against static padding, for example, seal and dynamic padding, for example, the shell DB, on iron data size and present size. Our attacks can effectively bypass these paddings more than 60% recovery rate on average. Regarding how seal and shell DB works, as well as the optimization of our attacks, please see our paper for more details. Finally, assuming that during our attacks, the client actively updates a large number of files, then we have to modify our attack to cope with the noise caused by these updates. The modified attack was as follows. In the baseline phase, we observe all queries and find the largest response size denoted as RSP marks. In the injection phase, we predict or set the total update size, denoted as T side U, and set gamma to meet that gamma greater than RSP marks plus T side U, and in this inject files as VBA with the new parameter gamma. Then in the recovery phase, we can restore the query queue with the response side RSP queue as the keyword W RSP queue divided by gamma and random. 
Due to the large enough gamma, we can easily animate the impact of updates. So here the gamma is actually the upper bound. In reality, a small gamma is enough to help us achieve non-eagle node recovery rate. We demonstrate the recovery rates on iron data side under different gamma and updated spatters. We consider that class updates may all be deletions, all be additions, or randomly selected additions and deletions. But no matter how the client update files, that gamma to 32 multiplied upon W is sufficient to achieve a recovery rate of over 50%. Here is the conclusion. We conclude that our volumetric attacks can achieve high recovery rate with small injection and re effective bypass on pitings. We say that an effective distance strategy should be hybrid and probabilistic. That is, it should be able to hide both file size and response length by random or differentially private noisy padding. Thanks for listening. Our code is available on GitHub, and please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any questions.